Today I've got a nice integration problem that comes from the GRE. So the GRE is an exam which is used by some universities for graduate admission in the United States. Okay, so our goal is to determine all real numbers A such that one equals the integral from E to A to the E of DX over X times the integral of A to A times X of DY over Y. And I like this because we've got this kind of embedding of integrals within integrals. I think, in fact, you could keep that embedding going and see some sort of limiting procedure. Maybe post in the comments if you can see of an interesting problem built out of that sort of embedding procedure. Now, before we get going with this solution, I'd like to point out that if you want to see more GRE material, we have twice weekly GRE prep study streams or live streams on the second channel math major. And these are done by the channel assistant who is preparing for grad school right now. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing that I'd like to do is maybe take this inner integral and calculate that. And let's see what we get for that. So let's notice that if we take the integral from a to a to the a times x of dy over y, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we take the antiderivative, that'll be the natural log of y, maybe the absolute value of y to be careful, and then evaluated from a to a times x. Now let's also notice that the value of x is between e, which is like a little bit more than two, or maybe like between two and three, to a to the e power. But a to the e power only really makes sense if a is positive, given that this is an irrational number here. So that being said, this interval of integration is only over positive real numbers, which means we don't really need these absolute values. So anyway, that tells us that we have the natural log of a times x minus the natural log of a, and then that's the same thing as the natural log of a times x over a, which is just the natural log of x. There I used a logarithm rule that turns a difference into a quotient. Okay, so now we can take our given equation and rewrite it in a simpler form. So we have one equals the integral from e to a to the e of dx over x times the natural log of x. So I think the interesting thing here is the fact that we had a's built into this integral in the denominator, but they don't actually influence anything that's going on because they cancel out. Okay, now how would we do this? Well, notice this is set up for a pretty standard u substitution that you would learn in an integral calculus class. So let's set u equal to the natural log of x, and note that means that du is equal to 1 over x dx, or dx over x, if you will. The motivation for that is the fact that we have a function composed within another function. The natural log is composed in the reciprocal function, and then this function's derivative is also part of the integral. Those are the two main reasons you would want to do a substitution. So now let's maybe use this to change our bounds as well. So when x is equal to e, that tells us that u is equal to 1 because the natural log of e is 1. And then when x is equal to a to the e, that tells us that u is equal to the natural log of a to the e, which is the same thing as e times the natural log of a using exponent rules again. Okay, so that gives us the following equation. We have one equals the integral from one to e times the natural log of a of one over u e to the u. But now we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus taking the antiderivative, that'll give us the natural log of u evaluated from one to e times the natural log of a, so something like that. Again, we don't need absolute values here because this is a positive region of integration. Then this is gonna be the natural log of e times the natural log of a minus the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero. Okay, but then we've got a product inside of this outer natural log. We can build that out to a sum using log rules. That gives us one equals the natural log of e plus the natural log of the natural log of a. The natural log of e is one, so that cancels this one on the other side of the equation. So that tells us that ln ln a equals zero, and then we can exponentiate twice 
to grab a value for a. So exponentiating once gives us the natural log of a equals the number one, because because e to the zero is one. Exponentiating one more time gives us that a has to be e. And that would be our final answer here. So the number a, well, it turns out there's only one value here, and that is this special Euler's constant e. Now, if you'd like to see more GRE problems, I've actually done a couple more on the channel. You could check out the one that's on the screen right now. And if you've liked this video, consider subscribing. It would really help out. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.